The film opens in 1944 during World War II, showcasing a chaotic war scene with the Nazi army. They are seen escorting a mysterious man whose face is concealed. A concerned friend watches, wondering where they're taking him. When the cloth is removed, it's revealed that the man is none other than Indiana Jones. The Nazis are on a mission to steal valuable antiques, some of which are unique to this location and cannot be found anywhere else in the world. Indiana has also come here in search of a special knife. One of the Nazi soldiers, named Waller, spots that knife and attempts to capture it. However, a powerful explosion occurs, allowing Indiana to make a daring escape. He commandeers a car, unwittingly with two Nazi soldiers inside. Believing the driver is up front, Indiana remains silent and takes the wheel. However, the Nazis eventually discover that it's Indiana driving, prompting him to jump out of the moving car in order to evade capture. As Indiana fought and eliminated some of the Nazi soldiers on the train, he eventually found himself in a carriage where the Nazis were storing the stolen antiques. Here, he hoped to locate the precious knife he had been seeking. However, to his disappointment, he discovered that the knife was a fake. Unbeknownst to him, his nemesis Waller had intentionally left the replica behind, having prior knowledge of Indiana's quest. Waller possessed a valuable machine created by a scientist that allowed for time travel, and these all things were also witnessing by the Indiana's friend who had captured by them. While Indiana collected numerous valuable antiques, he moved to another compartment to avoid detection by Nazi soldiers. In one of these compartments, he spotted his friend tied to a chair and promptly freed him. In the following carriage, Indiana confronted Waller, who possessed the time-traveling device. Indiana engaged in a physical altercation with Waller, managing to obtain the device. Realizing that staying on the train put them at risk of being captured by the pursuing Nazis, Indiana and his friend decided to make a daring escape on foot. However, the Nazis were determined to apprehend them. Following the explosion near the train, Indiana and his friend narrowly escaped by diving into a canal. However, they later discovered that it wasn't the Nazis who had bombed the train, it was actually the work of the Americans. Unfortunately, this meant that Indiana couldn't retrieve the time travel device, as it had fallen into American hands. Fast forward to 1969, and Indiana Jones had matured into a college professor. He taught history and frequently posed challenging questions to his students. However, his students often gave incorrect answers. One exception was a girl named Helena, who consistently provided correct responses to Indiana's questions. Impressed by her knowledge, Indiana took notice. Indiana mentioned a scientist who had created various inventions, including weapons and time travel devices. He then left the college, with Helena following him. Unbeknownst to them, a CIA agent and a group of thugs, including an American agent, were tailing them in a nearby hotel. In the midst of all this, a familiar face emerges, Waller, the same person we encountered at the beginning of the story, the one who was involved in stealing antique items. It turns out that the American agent was working for Waller, and Waller had concealed his Nazi identity. He had been working in the aerospace industry, even with NASA. The focus then shifts to Helena and Indiana. Helena reveals her passion for archaeology and her extensive knowledge of history. She expresses her desire to find the missing part of the time travel device, the dial. Indiana, though somewhat disappointed, decides to bring Helena to the college library where they used to study. There, they retrieve the device that Indiana had kept safe all this time. However, it's only half of the device because the scientist who created it intentionally damaged it to prevent it from falling into the wrong hands. As they examine the device, they are confronted by a group of individuals who turn out to be CIA agents. Among them is the same agent who had been trailing Helena earlier in the story. In a tense confrontation, it becomes clear that the group of individuals have learned that Indiana possesses the time travel device. They open fire on Indiana and Helena. In the chaos, Helena manages to escape with the device, leaving Indiana captured and placed in a van. They interrogate him, demanding to know the device's whereabouts. However, their van comes to an unexpected halt due to a crowd of people ahead. It turns out that this commotion is because Neil Armstrong is about to take his historic first step on the moon. The distraction gives Indiana an opportunity to outwit his captors. He escapes on foot, eventually finding a horse to ride and eventually boards a train to make his getaway. After escape from there, Indiana reunites with his friends, who inform him that Helena is not what she appears to be. She's a thief who steals antiques and rare items, selling them on the black market. Moreover, she has a criminal record and has spent time in jail. Upon hearing this, Indiana decides that he must track her down, as she possesses the valuable dial device. His friends assist him by making the necessary arrangements, including providing him with a fake passport. They also give him an old cap as a keepsake, a reminder of all their past adventures together. The next day, Indiana arrives at a hotel in search of Helena, only to discover that she is in the midst of auctioning off the dial device. As he attempts to intervene, Helena's assistant, who is also a friend of hers, blocks his path, and they engage in a tense standoff. In the midst of this confrontation, 
Indiana spots Waller and immediately recognizes him as a Nazi from their earlier encounter. Memories flood back, and Indiana addresses Helena, urging her not to proceed with the auction. This sparks a fierce fight as everyone present desires to get their hands on the valuable device. Ultimately, Helena gains possession of the device and throws it to her assistant. However, Waller manages to snatch it away from her. In the chaos that ensues, Helena and Indiana make a quick escape, but Waller has already disappeared. Indiana hops into an auto rickshaw and attempts to follow them, but it's too late, Waller and the device are gone. The scene shifts to Waller, who is confronted by the CIA agent. The agent accuses Waller of causing the deaths of many innocent people due to his actions. It becomes evident that the CIA agents who were supposedly working against Waller were actually in league with him. In a shocking twist, Waller confesses to being a Nazi, declaring that he was one in the past and will remain one in the future. Up to this point, Waller had been living under a false identity, concealing his Nazi past. Meanwhile, Indiana seeks the help of his sailor friend, who owns a ship. Indiana explains that he needs to venture out to sea, and Helena and her assistant accompany him. During their voyage, Helena engages Indiana in a conversation, asking him what he would do if he had the chance to travel back in time. Indiana reveals that he would use the opportunity to save his son, who tragically died in an accident. This revelation leaves him with a heavy heart. The following day, Indiana embarks on his sea journey with the goal of locating the sunken and destroyed Nazi ship. They discover numerous coffins belonging to those who had perished on the sunken vessel. As they explore the wreckage, a large whale approaches, and Indiana manages to drive it away. Amid the wreckage, Indiana finds a box containing a large stone with strange inscriptions. As Indiana's ship ascends with the box, they are intercepted by the crew of the whaling ship. Upon surfacing, they seize the box containing the enigmatic stone. Indiana is instructed to place the stone on the ground. In a clever move, Helena, the archaeologist, deceives her captors by providing them with false information, leading to a bomb explosion. Seizing this opportunity, Indiana, Helena, and her assistant manage to escape to another ship. Indiana brings the heavy stone with him, suspecting there might be something hidden inside. To investigate, he sets the stone on fire, revealing a gold shield. Inscribed on the shield is information about the whereabouts of the other part of the dial and the burial place of the scientist who created the time machine. Determined to find the missing piece of the device, the trio heads to the location but when they reach there, the assistant of Helena is kidnapped by someone. Indiana is concerned about his friend and attempts to follow their captors but is unable to catch up with them. Along the way, Helena assures Indiana that her assistant is resourceful and skilled at getting out of difficult situations. Upon reaching the cave mentioned on the gold shield, they discover that the whaler's men are already present there. The cave is filled with toxic gas, but Indiana bravely ventures further inside. Guided by the directions on the gold shield, Indiana and Helena progress deeper into the cave. They come across a fast-flowing underground river, which they navigate by crossing a bridge. The men pursuing them from the whaling ship remain in close pursuit. Continuing their journey, Indiana and Helena eventually arrive at the scientist's burial site. As they remove the stone, they discover the scientist's complete skeleton. Here, they also find the missing part of the device they had been searching for, bringing Indiana great joy. While exploring the site, Helena is surprised to find depictions of modern-day objects, such as an airplane and a clock. She wonders how someone from that era could have known about such advanced technology. Upon closer examination of a clock attached to the scientist's skeleton, Helena realizes that it represents a future time, featuring technology that does not yet exist. She begins to understand that the scientists were tampering with time and possess knowledge of time travel. Indiana corroborates Helena's suspicions, confirming the incredible truth of their discoveries. As the whaler and his men arrive at the scientist's burial site, they affirm the scientist's belief that time travel is indeed possible. The whaler takes the missing part of the device from Indiana and attaches it to the device. The device begins to activate, indicating that it's now functional. Helena's assistant, who had been captured earlier, launches an attack against the whaler in an attempt to free Indiana. A firefight ensues, during which Indiana sustains an injury. Recognizing the danger Helena faces, Indiana urges her to leave, fearing for her safety. Helena and her assistant manage to escape from the scene, but the whaler and his men take Indiana with them, heading towards the airport. On the other hand, Helena continues to secretly follow the whaler and his group. She and her assistant discover an airplane, and she asks her assistant if he can fly it. He expresses his willingness to try. With a bicycle assisting her, Helena boards the whaler's plane. Her assistant also returns with another plane. The whaler believes he has found the location where he can initiate time travel. A bright light suddenly appears in the sky, enveloping the ship as it heads towards the light. Helena's assistant's plane is also following closely behind. They have all traveled through time and arrived in a different era. However, their plane begins to lose control because they have ended up in the midst of a war-torn environment with widespread destruction. Helena desperately tries to regain control of the plane, 
but it proves to be impossible. She hangs onto the plane as best as she can, with Indiana rushing in to assist. Unfortunately, both of them ultimately fall from the plane. Fortunately, their parachutes deploy, saving them from a deadly crash. In this new time period, they encounter the very scientists who had created the time travel machine. These scientists are still working on completing the device, as it hasn't been invented yet in this time. They witness the crash of the plane that carried the whaler, which is completely destroyed. The scientists approach the wreckage and remove the clock from the whaler's hand, the same clock that they had seen earlier in the present time on their tailor's hand. At this moment, Indiana shares something important with Helena. It turns out that the entire plan was orchestrated by the scientist. He had configured the dial so that anyone using it would be transported back to the exact location where he resided. And that's precisely what occurred. The scientist expresses his desire to stay in this time period indefinitely and live out the rest of his life here. However, the other scientists approach Indiana and hand him the clock and the time travel device, urging him to return to his own time. Indiana initially hesitates but ultimately agrees when Helena convinces him that staying in this time could cause problems for them. In a surprising turn of events, Helena delivers a strong punch to Indiana, rendering him unconscious. When he regains consciousness, he finds himself back in his own time, in the present. The same clock and time travel machine are beside him, from which he had journeyed 2000 years into the past. Helena reappears and comforts Indiana, acknowledging his loneliness. She then calls his estranged wife to join them, and they are all filled with happiness. With this heartwarming reunion, the movie's story comes to a close. Thank you for watching our recap. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and feel free to explore our other recaps.